there have always been two sides, right? I mean, there's always them and then there's us. So them, they're the people that they don't vote like us, they don't look like us, they don't eat like us, they don't make relationships like us, they don't carry the same values that we have. And so I'm bringing you here to a place to help you understand that, see, it's pretty much the same way it always has been in Jesus' time. See, over on the other side of the lake was where the good Jews lived. It's if you've heard of the names Capernaum and Chorazin and, and there's Tiberius over here. And on that side, Herod Antipas was the ruler. And so Herod, while he was over there on that side of the lake, those people all eat kosher food. Those people make sure that they go to the synagogue all the time. Those people, they think the same, they vote the same. They're all a little bit different, but, but then there's the other people. See, that's this side. This side was Herod's other son, Philip the Tetrarch. And Philip wasn't really that keen on sticking with all the Jewish rules and all the systems. So he kind of allowed this Roman culture to come in. And so in this place, there were, there were pig farms all over these hills. And as a matter of fact, right over here, there was the city was one of the cities, the Decapolis, and they had you know, altars to other gods. I mean, this side is the kind of side that that side would never, ever come over to. And so in this place, you can kind of get a better understanding when Jesus was just right across the lake. And he says in Mark four, it says that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, hey, let's go over to the other side. So leaving the crowd behind, and he always had a crowd over there, tons of people, the rabbis and religious leaders and people that kind of thought and ate and studied like them. but. He left that crowd behind and it says, and I love this little line, it says, they took him along, Jesus. There's this little line, just as he was. And they got in the boat and it says there were also other boats with him. And as they begin to cross the lake, it says that there was this furious squall, which is kind of interesting because there haven't been a lot of storms on this lake. It's not very common, but they do have storms occasionally. As a matter of fact, they have on record just a few years back, they had a storm out on the sea where they're like eight to 10 foot waves. You can imagine these little rickety boats where you can barely fit 13 people inside of them. And as they're rowing across and Jesus is just worn out from teaching and he falls into the boat, that this storm comes and it just starts beating him down. But all the while as he's traveling across, you need to know that um, in this place, someone, they didn't know it yet, but someone right here was about to have an encounter with Jesus. But see, in this, in this cave system, there was a man who was demon possessed. He would cut himself with stones and he just would walk around and he would scream. There were actually two of them. One of them we're gonna tell the story on and literally the, you can still hear the cars going by. This was a trade route and the people at the time said that this trade route, people were scared to come down here because he was strong and he was violent and he was screaming out in the night. They, he, they kept trying to chain him up because they didn't want it to interfere with everything but he kept breaking the chains and this guy was a train wreck. And so when the storm came on their way over, you can imagine the disciples were thinking as they were headed over to the other side, they're not just afraid of the storm. They, they know they're not supposed to be going over there anyways. This isn't a place that they're supposed to be. They don't have the right food and they don't have the right religious thoughts and they don't have the right political opinions. And so when the storm's coming, they're kind of wondering, is there something more to the storm? But right down here, the boat lands. And if you remember, the story, this demon possessed man. I don't, I don't know if he saw the boat. I don't know how he knew it was Jesus, but he just started running from this cave, running down to the seashore. And as Jesus stepped off the boat, it says the demoniac fell on his knees right in front of Jesus. And he just said, don't, don't harm me. Isn't that funny? Don't harm me. As if, as if this living in a cave, demon possessed and chained isn't, isn't bad enough. But he said, don't hurt me. And Jesus had an encounter with a demon possessed man. And just like this, Jesus changes this man's life. And the demons go run and the demons go scatter. And as a matter of fact, there's a hill. It's the only hill right here where the pigs could have run down. It's the only cliff where the cliff meets the water. So the 
demons go into the pigs and the pigs run off the cliff and they fall into the shore and you know, all the people come out from everywhere and you just think, you're thinking you're waiting for a revival to happen, right? You're waiting for everybody to accept Jesus Lord. But that's not how the story goes. See, the people see the pigs say, hey, we like, maybe we like your message, but don't mess with our business. Maybe they're scared of that kind of power. I don't know, maybe. But here's what I know. They tell Jesus, Jesus, you need to leave. Like, we, we don't know what to do with you. You need to get on your boat and you need to go back to the other side. And so all that we have left is this one guy and the guy pleads to come with Jesus. He says, Jesus, please, can I come with you? I wanna come with you. And Jesus says, no, no, no. You're gonna go home and you're gonna tell your family what I've done for you. And so that's the end of the story, at least we think. I mean, Jesus is gonna head off on the boat and one guy's changed and everybody else made him leave. I mean, what a, what a waste of a trip, right? I mean, you know, they, they didn't expect opposition. As a matter of fact, it said they left with, a, with several boats, but when they got on this side, there was only one boat. Most of the people turned back. Most of the people didn't make it over. They get here, they run into a guy. They didn't see that, a naked guy running at him coming. And all of a sudden they change his life, transform his life. The people come out and say, you need to leave. What a waste except for, see that guy went back to the Decapolis and he just began to tell people what Jesus had done for him. I mean, they really knew this guy was a mess. I mean, they remember binding him. They remember driving past with their carts and with their horses and with their cattle and remembering that they were afraid of this man. And all of a sudden he's sitting and he's in his right mind and he's talking about this Jesus and what Jesus has done for him. And so, it's no accident that when Jesus comes back over to this other side, he finds about 4,000 people on these hillsides just waiting to hear from him. Why? Because they can't get past what he's done in the life of this one man. And so in that moment, he, Jesus just sits down and just begins to teach them. And, 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 and then he kind of moves on and we don't, we don't hear much about the, the, much about the rest of that story, right? So then Jesus lays down his life and you fast forward about 30, 40 years and, and there's this Roman opposition where the Jews revolt against Rome and they've just had enough of people being in their territory and so they try to muster up, it's not a very good one, but they just try to muster up a fight to really fight back the Romans. And in that moment, when they go to fight the Romans, Rome just says, you know what, we've had enough. We had too many revolts. These people, we're just gonna wipe them out. So they start at the very top near Caesarea Maritime and up near Caesarea Philippi, and they just begin to wipe out the Jews one at a time, all the way down to the south. The temple is destroyed, every Jew gone. But there's one community that remains, and it's the community that was born here. As a matter of fact, this community from this one man, from this one community that didn't even have eyes for Jesus, that community, they just keep telling what Jesus has done. And as a matter of fact, you fast forward 350 years and this will become the main gospel sending presence in the region for over 300 years. The first couple bishops are gonna come out of this church right down the hill and this community, this should have never happened because Jesus on the other side said, here's what I know about the gospel. The gospel was made to go to people that aren't like us. They don't talk like us. They don't eat like us. They don't look like us. They don't vote like us. And Jesus just said, we have to go to the other side. I remember being on a plane and it's one of my one of those moments where I remember getting on the plane and I'm always the last one, I'm the worst at checking in. And so as I go there, I'm realizing as I walk on the plane that I'm gonna be, I'm like the last guy. I'm gonna be sitting between Bubba and Bubba, right? And in the middle aisle, in the middle of the seat and I just walk through the plane and all of a sudden I look down and there's this aisle seat next to this kind of young couple. And as I get ready to see it, I'm just like, I, you know, Shekinah glory is like shining on the seat. And I'm just sitting there looking, I'm going, Lord, you do love me, like you do love me. And I just walked to the seat and the guy looked at me and he said to me, he said, hey, you wanna sit here? And I, he was like, man, you get, and I was like, yeah, you know, I'll see nice people. I'm ready to sit down. And I sit down and he said, that's awesome. Cause I just landed the deal in my life and we're going to get wasted drunk. And I was like, 
okay. So I sat down on the seat and within, literally within a few minutes, I find out that the person next to him is in the adult in, in, entertainment industry. And, and he is a guy who has built this, you know, this company, but he's been all about going around, traveling around the world and seeing the, the, the best looking people that he can sleep with basically. And, and we're having this conversation. I'm just sitting here going, Lord, what in the world am I doing here? But here's what happened is they just started talking. I, I just, I had this moment. Maybe you've had this moment where you go, Lord, these people could not be any less like me. But something in your gut says, but the gospel's for them too. And so I, 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 just, I just remember praying, Lord, I don't know what to do, but just give me an in. And I remember the girl was talking about something and I kind of jumped in the conversation. I didn't really know what I was saying, but I just kind of tried. And, and all of a sudden, and I, and I promise, this, this guy right in the middle of us, he, he looks up and he looks at me and he says, are you a Christian? And I was like, I, th I think so. <laughs> yes, yes, I am a Christian. And he just started to weep. And I just thought, why is this guy crying? Is he having a breakdown? Is he, you know, and he just started weeping and his shoulders started struggling, shrugging. And the whole plane, we're still sitting on the tarmac and they're de-icing the plane. And in this moment, he just starts shrugging his shoulders and, and I'm trying to hear what he's saying. He just keeps talking and talking, but I can't hear him. And so finally I said, slow down. What's going on? He said, you don't even understand. I was in the shower this morning. And I just, I just knew that my life's got to change and I've got to, I've, I've got to pursue God and I've got to figure out this Jesus thing. And I don't even know any Christians and I don't even have any in my life. My whole life is filled with drug dealers and people that have the same thoughts and actions and heart like me and we're wasting our lives and we're building these empires and we're all empty and we all know it. And I told God in the shower today, if you had just put a Christian in my life today, I swear I'll change. And he just looked at me with tears running down his face. He said, just promise me you'll talk about Jesus. Just tell me, can we just talk about Jesus on this flight? And I just wonder sometimes, like how many people are sitting in their caves with their baggage and their chains, with their brokenness, with their isolation at night, screaming out in the middle of the night, longing for something more, waiting for someone who's not like them, who doesn't vote like them, who doesn't act like them, doesn't talk like them, but inside of them, they are carrying the very thing that they need. So I just wanna ask you, um, would you be willing to take the gospel to people not like you, people that their mouths aren't gonna run like yours and they might have situations that are way messier than what you've been around. But here's my question, who, who's gonna take the gospel to this guy? Because the impact, like the church that was born in the presence, you never know, hear, hear me, never underestimate the power of one changed life.